Hi all, welcome to the first part of the video lecture on structured query language. So the name SQL is uh, presently expanded as structured query language. So the originally uh, it, it is known to be something like SQL. Okay, SQL means structured English query language. That was its initial name. But now the SQL becomes SQL. Okay, structured query language. So here it is like a structured English query language so like that it, it was it was given a name say sql initially and was designed and implemented at ibm research at the interface for an experimental relational database system called the system r so system r is a relational database uh, system as we already know so we gone through what is relational data model uh, and uh, we saw the formal languages for relational data model that is relational algebra in detail and now it's time for us to explore the practical language or the standard uh, that implements this relational model uh, practically so that is our uh, sql and initially it is implemented for the relational database uh, system called system r okay so sql is now the standard for the commercial relational database management system so most of the commercial relational database management systems are based on this sql now if you are looking at the standardization of sql it is a joint effort by ansi that is american national standards institute and the ISO International Standards Organization so they together standardized this uh, SQL and the first uh, SQL standard is known to be SQL 86 so definitely from the year of release 1986 or it is otherwise known to be SQL 1 okay so that about it now uh, other popular SQL versions are like uh, the 92 release SQL 92 or SQL version 2 then the next stable version is like SQL 99 that is version 3 then 2003 2006 which is having XML features and 2008 uh, which is uh, which started incorporating the object database features right 2011 etc so like that it's uh, gone through many versions yeah the sql language may be considered as one of the major reasons for the commercial success of relational database so relational database as you as we already know the relational model is a theoretical co concept why it become popular sql is having a key role right so that makes it a commercial data model so because it uh, became a standard for relational databases so before the re relational databases what we are having is this network and hierarchical system and people readily or happily um, die converted uh, themselves to this relational model because of this sql so one reason is like uh, mm, even if the users become dissatisfied with the particular relational database management system product they are ha they are using converting to another relational dbms software uh, i mean product was not expected to be too expensive and time consuming so because uh, there are many relational database management system softwares available and all of them are basically using this sql standard okay so as it is a standard so e even though a particular um, sql uh, database management system which we are using we are not satisfied we, we can easily migrate to another uh, maybe a better uh, S um, this relational data man uh, database system okay because both are using this sql so that kind of a standardization we can have okay so it is always uh, easy for us to migrate from a relation in one uh, dbms software to another one easily if we are following the sql standard so that is the uh, uh, final conclusion okay some uh, theoretical concepts given like this now the basic sql and uh, advanced sql like that uh, one, one can explore this so the Mm, so basically you know it is a comprehensive database language in the sense it can be used for both the data definition and data manipulation so it is data definition language and at the same time data manip manipulation language all together it is a comprehensive database language in addition to that it is have uh, it has facility to create something called as a virtual table or view we will see uh, how to define and what is the use for specifying security authorization uh, for defining integrity constraints and for specifying transaction control like that there are there are many other additional things that that one can do using this sql it also has the uh, rules for embedding SQL statement into a general purpose programming language like Java or uh, C++. I think you are already familiar with uh, this kind of concepts. The later SQL standards are, uh, uh, so it's basically divided into a core specification plus a specialized extension. So if you are looking at the core, it is supposed to be implemented all uh, by all SQL uh, 
RDBMS vendors. Okay, so the core part is something common for everyone, and extensions will vary from one implementation to another. And we can go for any number of implementation depending on the need, right? Uh, whether it is uh, so, there are extensions for handling spatial data, temporal data. So like that, we are having uh, for uh, using our data mining, right? So for data warehousing, online analytical processing. So depending on the type of requirement we we can, we are having, we can think of the extension if needed. Otherwise, the core will satisfy the need. Okay. Now, if you are looking at SQL, it uses uh, table, row, and column for the formal uh, relational data model uh, terms. Like uh, in relational model, uh, we have uh, something called as a relation that is nothing but a table, right? So in SQL, we are just calling it as a table. So this relation, tuple, attribute, these terminologies are therefore relational data model. When it comes to SQL, we will use a normal terminology like a table, row, and column. That's all. So now for data definition, so we are talking about a data definition using SQL. We have a statement called create statement. Okay. So using create statement, one can create a schema or he can create a table inside that uh, schema or a particular type can be created, domain can be created. So like that uh, uh, as well as other constraints like views, assertion, triggers for creation of all those things, we are using the create statement. So typically, um, so this uh, only usage of this create statement is for creating the schema, schema, the entire schema. For example, here uh, we are trying to create a schema called a company for the entire company database and it's given an authorization or, or a uh, user author authorization like a J Smith. Okay, so uh, by which you can authorize this particular company database and password, everything you can set accordingly. So this is a rough picture of the create uh, schema. Mm, statement okay so so now we have a schema called the company now within that schema one can define different tables like uh, employee table department table etc so once so you want to create a table uh, the statement you have to use is like a create a table so create a table will create a table here it is like a create a schema okay so remember that so accordingly if it is uh, creation of a view you have to write like a creative view Okay, if you want to uh, create an assertion or something, accordingly you have to write, okay. So here you can create a table and directly by uh, specifying the name of the cable or you can uh, more clearly tell that this employee table is uh, coming inside the schema company, okay. So in this way you can uh, create, but when you are writing like, uh, like uh, direct table name, uh, already you should ensure that uh, the schema in our environment is uh, this company, so that you have to make sure. Now, you know, uh, once you created the table, if you want to change the structure, you can use another command, uh, I mean, uh, type of statement called uh, alter table. Okay, so that is another um, statement available in SQL by which you can change the uh, definition of a, a particular structure. It can be a table or if you want to add a new column, uh, you want to change the data type of something or constraints or something. In, in all those things, whenever you want to update the structure, you can make use of the alter table command and create and alter in between if you want to drop uh, a table as a whole we have drop command also like that so that about it so here, here typically it shows the company database um, different tables like uh, first we have this uh, employee table how can you create employee table create a table name of the table is employee and now what are all the attributes of the employee table that you have to define like a first name is an attribute middle initial last name social security number birth date address sex salary supervisor assistant dno hope you remember all those things right so when we mapped that er2 relational model we understood like how why these fields are coming now we can define the type of each field like uh, first name can be a variable character of maximum size 15 so care and work care are there uh, so care typically having a fixed size when it comes to work care maximum 15 size will be allocated so first name of any particular person can be of maximum 15 if it is less than also accordingly um, it will uh, save the space in the sense in case of care uh, de data type if 15 spaces are allocated so uh, even though the actual name of the person is say having some five character remaining 10 characters will be padded uh, with a null so something like that is not there when it comes to work care okay so this is that is on data type uh, equal unto care but variable length the character that's all okay so now we have a constraint saying that this particular field should not be uh, should not accept any null value because it is name of a person right so we don't want null value there but when it comes to middle initial and all some people may not be having it so we don't have such a restriction for the second field last name also we have this restriction it should not be null so at least we are expecting first name and last name for any people 
ओके सो दैट इज मैंडेटरी फॉर सो दैट इज वे दिस नॉट नल कंस्ट्रेन ओके सोशल सिक्यूरिटी नंबर इज अगेन इट्स अ की राइट सो डेफिनेटली इट शुड शुड बी नॉट नल and also uh, you know already we are setting it as a primary key by writing something like a primary key social security number so when you are writing like this uh, we are not going to allow a null value for this uh, key attribute so something like that is already there but still if you want you can write it additionally even though you are not writing uh, this primary key value will not be null so entity integrity that that will be automatically implied by it okay so now birth date uh, is of data type date so next we will see different data types available so now you are already familiar right work year year uh, then date again work year for address now the length is increased to 30 right uh, sex uh, so these things uh, like sex uh, or middle initial just care means uh, some on byte information is enough right yeah and uh, just like a male or female f or a, uh, m like that you can denote so that's why we are not specifying the size now salary is uh, given a data type like decimal mm, say 10 uh, points uh, before the decimal point and uh, some two sorry 10 digits before the maximum 10 digits before the decimal point and maximum two digits after the decimal point something like that uh, we have the uh, formatting for the decimal data type now here uh, this supervisor assassin is character of nine now it is res uh, restricted to have some nine characters so when you are simply writing in a square just a single character it means okay and department number is an integer field and that also uh, we made it uh, like a not null uh, that means because every employee must work on a department right so you can't um, give a null value for a particular employee and you are setting a social security number as a primary key of the given tables by writing primary key SSN or when you declare this SSN uh, so if you write the primary key here that also going to work okay you can either write like this or you can write along with the attribute definition similarly the department table we have a department name department number manager SSN start data right like that work here the data type not null constraint everything and now you know in the department table this uh, uh, department number act as the primary key where department name, name is also unique right we are not uh, allowing department name to repeat in that case you can tell it like uh, it is uh, not a primary key but it is just a unique attribute so you can inform uh, that by using the um, keyword say unique okay now here we have the foreign key from this uh, department table um, we can refer see here employee table is also having foreign key I think this definition is not complete but anyways so, so here it is complete uh, in the department table we have a foreign key that is a manager social security number hope you remember right and that is referencing the employee table and where it is referencing the it will be referencing the one second okay see uh, yeah so we have the foreign key that is a manager assistant which is referring the employee table and it is particularly referring towards the key attribute of the employee table primary key that is SSN okay now we have a um, department location which uh, be because it was a multivariate attribute so we maintain a different table for it hope you remember so we are creating it by um, mentioning the attribute like D number relocation and the primary key is a, co is a combination of the department number and department location hope you remember because if you take department number alone it will repeat the location also will repeat but together it's not going to repeat and what about the foreign key department number act as a foreign key that references the parent relation that is the department uh, towards the D, D number which is the primary key of that table okay so similarly we have this uh, mm, project uh, table project name project number accordingly type see the not not null constraint in the next semester you will be implementing it and that time you should know the syntax clearly so it's a very easy thing and there is nothing uh, tough or hard to remember and all okay so just uh, focus Mm, the phone number is given as an integer project location was a single valued attribute in project primary key is said to be pro project number and the project name is also not going to repeat so we are uh, ensuring it by the keyword unique okay and foreign key is dnm that references a uh, department table using i mean where it will refer to uh, this uh, d number which is the primary key of the department table now works so on you know it is a many to many relation so we have a different uh, many to many relationship so we have a relation or table for that and that is a works on uh, table so so uh, the which employee is working on which project right so employee social security number and the project number where he is working and number of hours he is working in 
say one week so it can be some decimal value so that is with the data type is uh, fixed like decimal and the primary key is the employee SSN and project number together and foreign key is the employee SSN that reference the employee table and also the project number is another foreign key that reference the project table because it is like a cross referencing table it has to refer the employee table and project table accordingly ESSN and BNO will act as a foreign key now la the, la, uh, the week entity we are having the dependent right so where this um, employee SSN is something we added as a foreign key so that you have to establish like this by writing foreign key employee SSN that reference the employee table primary key SSN right the primary key is the combination of the employee SSN and that is a strong entity um, primary key and the dependent name which is a partial key of this uh, weak entity all those things we already discussed now we are just looking at the syntax only so if you are um, not confident like what is foreign key what is primary key if you have any doubt please class you clarify these things from our previous video like from um, first you understand the relational data model clearly and you have to relation model mapping then you come come here it will be very much easier for you so i already uh, taken the assumption that you you because i already explained all those things okay so now we are just looking at the syntax when it comes to sql that's all so all these uh, bold things are uh, something uh, some meta uh, things in the language okay so they are uh, they are to be used as it is then other things will uh, are variables that can change right for a different table and attribute now base table versus virtual table so the type of table that we are created uh, so the six around six tables we created so far right that employee department uh, work zone project uh, location etc so they are known to be the base tables because uh, this means that the table and its uh, rows are actually created and stored in a file uh, by the database. So DBMS software will create them and they will be stored securely in the uh, some, uh, I mean, <laughs> some file in the secondary memory. Okay, But there is another concept called a virtual table. So this is about a base table. Now what is virtual table? Uh, or th they are otherwise known to be the views. Okay, So uh, what is a view? We already know. Uh, so it can be a subset of a physical table existing or it can uh, be made out of in different uh, attributes from different tables right so it may spread across more than one tables also so the type of query we are using is create view and then you have to uh, t so this create a view will be followed by the definition like what what you want uh, like which subset you want as a view so that uh, selection you will do follow following this okay so this uh, may not corresponds to an actual physical file so in sql the attributes in the base table are considered to be uh, so that about it so virtual table typically uh, we have this concept but we are not going to store it explicitly in the, uh, the secondary memory as a file instead it is something uh, we will use for the time being that particular program is running so uh, during execution this will be created and we will do some processing over it and after that it will terminate so it's not going to be a permanent base table uh, like uh, what we created otherwise okay so in SQL the attributes in a base table are considered to be ordered in the sequence in which they are specified in the create a table statement so when you create a table you are writing project name first in the sense this project name is going to be the first attribute uh, when you are storing its uh, attribute values in the uh, file okay database so similarly following project name this pop number will come p location so this ordering it will follow uh, when you you insert values into the table however the rows are not considered to be ordered within a table mm, that you know right so in, in a table the tuples it's set of tuples within a set element can be of any order so their order will uh, vary but within a uh, tuple the uh, the order of the attribute values matters so f from the basic definition of um, this relational model okay so we s already saw a different definition also but by looking at the basic uh, definition of relational model you know uh, within a set elements can repeat uh, or ele elements can <laughs> sorry within a set elements uh, are not allowed to repeat but they can come in any order so uh, within a table or a relation the order of the tuples doesn't matter but within a tuple the order of the attribute values matter and that order is nothing but the order in which you are defining them when you create the table okay so that is something uh, followed by it so that about it so we go through a very basic thing uh, from sql that is a create command so it can be used for creating a schema or it can be used for creating a particular table or it can be used for creating and this triggers assertions etc okay so anyway so the create a table query is what we explored uh, particularly in this video yes thanks for watching